The first thing Mindustry is, is a production game. Before you get to the tower defense, survival, attack, multiplayer, any of it, you'll want as much copper and lead as possible to do all your building as fast as you can. Especially if you're doing something that has a high difficulty, risk of failure, competing with other humans. Uh, you know, things that need to be optimal in order to be successful. You can't just phone it in. There's two primary ways that you could be getting your copper and lead. You could get it from mechanical drills, or you could be getting it from the, the mono automated support robots. Uh, so the question that I'm going to try and answer here is which one of those are better and under which circumstances. And I've set up some experiments and split screens and spreadsheets and blah, blah, blah to present that information. And as an added bonus, I found some bugs with the monos along the way that I'll show off and might help people avoid those causing problems for themselves. Or it might even, you know, get a bug report submitted and get that fixed. Here is the main event. So I've got a split screen set up here. On the left is a self-sustaining setup for a single mono factory. And on the right is the same amount of copper as used to build a mono factory turned into mechanical drills getting lead and copper. Uh, both sides start out with the same loadout. So you can see that the mechanical drills are automatically cheaper and they also don't use any lead for the construction. So you're starting out with that amount of sort of bonus lead to begin. Then I've got the timer marking sort of the point that both uh, sides started. And I've got a chart at the bottom revealing itself as time goes on that is seconds on the x-axis and on the y-axis is the total amount of copper and lead that you've got available to do all of the other things that you would be doing with this setup. So we've got a head-to-head -head direct comparison, one mono factory versus the same cost in mechanical drills. Uh, the mono factory starts up slower. It takes time for the coal to get in, do the power, do the silicon smelter, and actually build the mono. It takes 35 seconds for each one. As soon as that comes out, it goes over to the copper patch and starts doing the mining. So there is already an obvious uh, timing disparity here. Mechanical drills build faster and are overall cheaper, and they start producing sooner, but they produce at a constant rate. You know, you're doing 0.36 per second for each one of those drills that has four ore patches under it. And that's constant for the entire time. You go up to 10 minutes, 20 minutes, still that 0.36 for the whole time. Uh, you can do the math on those that it takes 12 copper to build those drills. And, you know, 0.36, 12 divided by 0.36, you know, it takes like a minute for a copper drill to pay for itself. The main difference with the monos is that over time the production accelerates. As more monos get produced, the ones before it keep working, so you're getting the benefit of one mono, and then two monos, and then three monos, and on and on and on. So the graph for the monos is actually going to be sort of a parabolic curve, or a polynomial, or something like that. While the slope of the mechanical drills is going to be a constant. And so the thing that we want to find is the intersect point between those. For everything before a certain point in time, the mechanical drills are going to have given you more lead and copper. And for everything past that point in time, you're going to end up getting more from the monos. So if you know the game that you're playing well enough, be PvP or a custom challenge map or campaign or whatever, if you know how much copper and lead you need to build the stuff to win, and you know that you can do it under a certain amount of time, then yeah, go for the mechanical drills. If you know that you're going to be playing a longer game, then the monos always end up coming out ahead. Some of the other factors that come into play, the monos only need one tile of ore to get everything out. 
So if you have limited copper and lead tiles, the models would do better because you just don't have room to fit all the mechanical drills. Another constraint is unit cap. If you just got one core shard, then you've got eight monos. And without that continuous building for the entire time, you know, those monos cap out at three, four, five minutes or so. And then you don't get any more acceleration, and that's also going to be a constant increase. So in that case, the mechanical drills probably will end up being better. Let me up to four minutes. Maybe I should have done a logarithmic scale on the chart there, because it's really kind of hard to see the lines. Or maybe scaling it or something. You know, that's I took the data and I put it in a, a Google spreadsheet and then I pulled out the chart and it just sort of revealing it over time. Uh, the blue line, which represents the mechanical drills, uh, that is above the red line right now. It's probably easier to see the actual ore counts up at the top. You know, we're at 3,000 total copper and lead for the mechanical drills and the monos are at 2,000 at this point. So if whatever you're playing, if you have a way to win it in under five minutes, then so far the mechanical drills are the winners. Another difference between these, your initial loadout. If your initial loadout starts out with silicon and you use that to unload and build your monos, then that speeds up the curve for the mono production. And so that will reduce the amount of time it takes for the monos to come out ahead. Like for, for what I do on my server, the eviction PVP servers, the game starts you out with a mono factory and a significant amount of silicon because it's just, it always ended up being better. It was common knowledge that getting your copper and lead for monos was better than doing it with drills. It takes less attention. Uh, it's faster. You can move on to the more interesting parts of the game sooner. Uh, so that was like one of the innovations when I made the server is start you out with the, the mono factory and the silicon, and it just gives it to you automatically. So new players will get the benefit of that without even knowing to do it. And that's kind of one of the first things you learn as you're learning to play eviction is go for more monos. Don't build drills on lead or copper. Uh, we're, we're not examining sort of the higher tech versions of this. This is like from an opening at the start of a game perspective. So we're not looking at pneumatic drills. We're not looking at water uh, that speeds up drill production or faster belts or laser drills or thorium drills or even using you know better power sources or better silicon sources to build the monos. Uh, all of that stuff comes later in the game after this phase has already passed. Oh, yeah. And right there, we just passed the point where the monos have caught up with the mechanical drills, you know, at about 4.2 thousand total copper and lead. You know, the, the lines on the graph have now intersected. So there's your answer. Uh, if you can win your game in less than seven minutes with 4,000 copper and lead, then you should use mechanical drills. If you need to do something that takes longer or takes more building than 4,000 lead of copper, then you should build monos. Mm -hmm. The rest is to see how this goes on over time, because we really want to get a sense of the, the curve of the monos and how that accelerates over time. If you were drilling your own stuff and you needed even more copper, even more lead, you know, you're, you're building more glass, maybe you need surge to, you know, go into your swarmers for defenses that actually work, then you're gonna need a lot of copper and a lot of lead. Uh, if you're doing it for drills, then you have to devote player attention. Now, 
much more valuable later in the game because there's a lot of other things that you could be doing to build, you know, copper drills and lead drills with your, your air blasts. And that takes attention and that takes power and that takes other resources. But the monos are just cranking away automatically. You don't need to pay any attention to it. You can be doing your unit micro, you can be setting up defenses, increasing production, all those other things. So that's another one of the main advantages of monos is do it for you. And that also applies if you're using more advanced support units to do your mining. If you have your polys mining, although they still only get copper and lead, mega using those to mine, uh, they also get titanium. And, and that's another sort of big time and attention savings that people playing on my server will go to is they'll do a lot of mining with megas so that they don't have to place titanium drills. How's that curve look on the chart now? So yeah, it's noticeably arcing up. You'll be able to see the exponential as the whole thing reveals. I skipped ahead to 20 minutes and now you can see the huge difference between monos and the mechanical drills. Uh, that curve is still arcing upward. We're up to 40,000 total lead and copper at 20 minutes versus uh, a little over 10,000 for the mechanical drills. So twice as much, no, 40,000, four times as much, four times as much stuff. And if you happen to build more than one mono factory, then, you know, double that by two or three or whatever. Huge amounts of stuff. A lot of times late in the game, people on my servers will have 100,000 lead and copper just from letting the monos run rampant. It gets harder, like the precision gets lower looking at like this because the ministry display only shows you those two significant figures. You know, you get some whatever thousands, 5.8 thousand. So you can't, you know, make a completely smooth chart when you're looking at it. Oh, well, there's probably some mod I could get that would show you the full number, but that might be harder to read visually in the heat of the moment. Another difference to point out between these methods, uh, the mono factory takes coal. If you're very coal constrained, you might want to be using that for building construction silicon instead of unit silicon or going into steam generators or you know whatever else you might need coal for. Look at those little guys go. Another thing that sort of made a difference, but kind of at a meta level, lots of monos supposedly cause server lag. I've played on industry servers where they actually tried to do things getting around monos to reduce that lag. And I think that's more just a servers being on poor quality hardware thing than anything else. Uh, I pay the big bucks, air quotes, for the VMs that I run my servers on, and we've never really had a problem with monos being a source of lag. Now, the things that are a source of lag is when you get multiple teams building thousands of units and they start attacking and shooting, and you know that'll drop you down to single digit ticks per second on the server, which, you know, the big games are the coolest games, but they're also the hardest uh, on the server. And that's the best you can do because the Mendistry server is single threaded, so you can't give it more cores. And Moore's Law, uh, the cores aren't really getting particularly better. So as long as it has one or two of the best cores available and enough memory to run, then that's the best you can do server-wise. Oh well. So let's see. After this experiment, uh, you see the monas fly around. They do they mine, then they go to the core and they deposit. If your ore patches are close, then flying distance doesn't matter. If your ore patches are far away, then it does. So I want to measure the difference it makes if the ore patches are far away, that flying time, because that'll change that seven minute intersection point to be longer. If your ore patches are far away, you may very well be better off building mechanical drills for longer. So I modified the map and I you know, added some scenery so you could see the scale. Uh, those ore patches are you know, 200 tiles away. 
And so now we're building monos, we're setting it up. Uh, I did a time skip. It doesn't matter how much time though, because this is where the bug pops up, or at least the first instance of bug. For some reason, when the ore tiles are far away, the monos only get copper, they ignore the lead. They don't balance it like they're supposed to, which is different from when the ore tiles are close. Here is another experiment where these ore patches are 99 tiles away. So they're, you know, much closer. We'll get the actual flying distance and we will see what the behavior ends up being. All right, so there's our first mono coming out, flying off to the ore patches. I have more copper than lead. So the expected outcome is that mono mines lead first. Go over, go take a look. So he's on the lead. So this time it's correct. When the patches were further than 99 tiles away, they always go to copper. Even if there's lead available, even if there's less lead than copper in your inventory. But when they're 99 tiles, that they properly balance it. Okay. So what else might make a difference in that behavior? You know, what if I cover some of those up? What are they gonna do? So we covered up the 99 distance ones. That mono was going to mine copper, or was going to mine lead. It got a range of the further lead, but then it gave up early. So it didn't mine as much. And all the ones coming behind it are going to copper instead, even though I've got more copper in inventory. So now they're making the wrong decision just by being one tile further away from the core. Uh, I took a, a look through the minor AI code since Mindustry is open source and I didn't see any like obvious thing about distance between core that, you know, like some magic number 99 or 100 in the code. So it's not immediately obvious why they're making this decision. But yeah, do that. And now they're just going to get copper the whole time. Uh, so if you're playing on a map that has your copper and lead far away, uh, don't build monos uh, and expect your resources to balance correctly. You're going to have to find another way to get your lead. All right, so let's do the next iteration of messing around with this. Uh, we're going to play around more with uh, covering up the ore patches to see what happens. So the copper that's 99 away has started out covered up. Uh, but the lead that's closer is not covered up. And that's like the, the starting state. So we'll, we'll see how the, the monos behave in this situation. Here comes the first mono. Headed off towards the ore patches. Uh, another thing to note, the, the much further ore patches are still present. Like the one that's uh, 200 away. So if I cover up all of these, then you would at least expect the monos to head off to the 200 patches. All right, so if that copper is not there when the mono spawns, then it goes for the lead like it should. That was correct. And the second one coming along gets the copper when copper is lower. This is correct, okay, good. Cover up the lead, then what happens? That guy was already heading towards the copper when I covered it up, so he gets a free pass for being wrong. But the next one should go to lead. And it doesn't. Okay, well, what if I cover that copper up? Is he still going to go to the alternative lead that is 100 tiles away instead of 99? Cover it up. Do it. Or open that up. He did that. Okay, so I revealed the 99 distance copper. And the monos still go to the 100 distance one. It looks like there's something about their mining decision making that doesn't reevaluate under these circumstances where ore patches have been covered up and then revealed again. 
they should be going to the 99 now that it's closer, and they're not. So the one that they were choosing to mine on, I covered up. Some of them come back to it. Some of them are stuck trying to get the 100 distance copper, and now they're completely locked. They don't know what to do. They're not going for the lead or the copper. They're just broken. So this is maybe the same bug, maybe a different bug, but another problem in the mono AI. Although the one guy that was initially getting the 99 distance copper, he's, he's happy and fine. I'll block him off and we'll see what happens. Now, there is another copper tile available at 200 tiles away. And they're not choosing to go to that. They, they want to get these ones that are under the belt. Still over there? Yeah. These are still open. Uh, these guys should be reevaluating their target ore and heading to the further patch. And they're not. Instead, they're stuck. And even worse, there's some kind of state in the global mono AI that is now stuck. Because new monos coming out of the factory are not correctly finding available ore patches and heading for them. These guys are somehow thinking that the 99 and 100 distance ones are where they should be going. And they're covered up, so they just don't do anything. I don't know. But if I head back, cover more things up, that doesn't make a difference. And no, oh, those are still available. Open them back up. Go look at more stuck ones. No, no. Go open it back up. So I can demonstrate that the state of all these monos is still stuck on the 99 and 100 distance copper by revealing them all by deconstructing those belts and then they immediately go back to mining. At least the ones that are there. So that was what they wanted to do the whole time. They weren't sort of revaluating and they're targeting. But the guys that are stuck at the factory, they're not in mining distance for that and they don't seem to have a move order to go to the revealed ore patches. So they'll never get stuck, they'll never get out of that loop. Cover the things back up, they give up. I think these will return to the covered up war patches. Yeah, they're heading for a thing that doesn't have copper. I think I'll do a bug report on this, uh, give a new, the link to the video and, and the save game and explain. I haven't quite explored all the variations of revealing, covering things up, building monos, whatever, but there is definitely something weird here and I'm not. Uh, a quick scan through the code didn't obviously look like what, so oh well. All right, so that's the bug stuff that I found. And if you're playing Mendistry and if you think you can win in less than seven minutes, build mechanical drills. If you need more than 4,000 copper and lead and more than seven minutes to win, then build monos. All right, that's the video. Thanks for watching. It's been a couple months since I've been able to upload. My family got a new person two months ago and that's been taking all my free time, but hopefully I'll be able to get back into the swing of things.